Hey everyone, Tactics here, bringing you a plus 20 walkthrough of Ataldazar in Season 3 of Dragonflight to help you guys get your Keystone Hero achievement. In this video, I'll be going kind of pull by pull here, discussing how we handle each of the trash mobs and bosses, and in this dungeon in particular, also showing you guys some pretty interesting spots that you can stand on in order to avoid some of those more dangerous like charge and leap abilities that exist in this keep. I'll be putting out walkthroughs just like this one for every single dungeon in Season 3 over the next week or two, so be sure you do subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you know when those get posted. And let's hop into it here, where the very first pull here, we do have one of those spots that I'll show you. Uh, and basically what it does is it makes the charge attack from the Juggernaut mobs here, which there's going to be two of in this pull, uh, just basically do nothing. So you see our mage has invis through. Uh, something else you can do, you can just group this pack up. And like the evoker could rescue someone up there this is just to kind of show you what happens and on higher keys you're probably going to see a massive pull here but for plus 20 it wasn't really necessary particularly in this dungeon which is like pretty forgiving we see we group it up quickly and the key here is that one the person up here gets in combat asap with these mobs and two everyone else stands in melee basically how that charge works is it'll go to the you know the range target and because there is no path available for the juggernaut charge you'll see here uh, it'll it'll cast its charges usually so there's a fanatic's rage uh, the charge will come out soon boom nothing happens with the merciless assault nothing happens so that's what a spot like there either railing works as well so you'll see both used probably on on higher keys when you do like a massive pull of this entire first area but again not super needed and because we waited for the mage to actually walk through i believe we uh, miss our timing to pick up razan here which is not a big deal so we're just gonna <coughs> come around here sorry excuse me pick up these sky screamers and then head down into the boss just one thing to be you know aware of is sanguine on on this week in particular but on a non-sanguine week this isn't too bad just because you know these mobs really have one cast and you can kick it uh, or you can uh, interrupt or sorry stop it with any cc so whatever works See right off the bat here, I'm bringing the boss to an area for LOS. It depends on like what your preference here, right? You can LOS around here, around here, or you can LOS using these pillars over there as well. This boss is fairly straightforward. Um, you know, pursuit, don't get eaten, obviously. Uh, you can use like uh, any combat drops to completely end the pursuit. And I believe we have our maze, not on this first one, I don't think it's up, but on the, um, the next pursuit, maybe I can fast forward and show you guys. I think this picks the mage again yeah and he just invises and it immediately cancels shadow meld works vanish works i believe feign death works do that as well so that's that's pretty much the only real tip for this boss tanks just be aware serrated teeth absolutely uh chunks you uh so you know be be aware of that i think i dwarfed it off or something like that uh it's gone oh no probably evoker bleed dispel yeah so you know alternating dwarfs evoker bleed dispel anything you have available uh is really nice for that bleed but you know there's not really th anything else to defensive as a tank on this fight so just put it into that bleed if you don't have any of those abilities to finish this boss off head up we've already killed the uh two sky screamers of course so we just hug the right wall here avoid those sarids almost fall back down on top of them uh, and then we pull this pack i believe we have a bad patrol here yeah so if i had immediately run up i probably could have grabbed them so it's probably what i should have done uh but you know otherwise we're just kind of waiting here not too much to talk about here focusing this honor guard down remember Honor guards are pretty scary, so, you know, kill that totem, kill the honor guard, uh, and tanks, just be careful if you do end up getting the debuff stacked up on you from the honor guard, if you're not, you know, parrying or dodging or, you know, getting lucky in that sense, uh, you will sometimes need to uh, make sure that you CC that honor guard and you can get away from it, just so that you don't get restacked up uh, from their nasty tank dot. Uh, moving forward here, we go just hugging the left wall here, going right into this pack. Not too much to talk about here, you know, stopping the shields, keeping interrupts on the Witch Doctor, otherwise the priority target uh, is going to usually be the Honor Guard, like I mentioned, but they just have way more health that it's it's pretty likely that they're going to die, you know, later on in the pool. As you can see, it's catching up to everything else, but, uh, you know, it's just too much of a health pool. And, you know, Sanguine Management here, just trying to pre-move, kidneying in Sanguine is not ideal, uh, but, you know, it is, uh, it is what it is sometimes. I think the changes to Sanguine were pretty nice, I guess, to go a little bit off topic, but uh, it's still Sanguine. It's still probably my least favorite affix, even with those nice changes to make it not stack. Moving knockbacks, that kind of thing, to control the Sanguine. And then we're going to the next pull here. Oh, here. So I jump down first. This is something I do. I, I talked about in my guide video. 
But if you want to check that out, it'll be linked in the description. Basically, I, as a tank, move forward, jump down here, do some AoE stuff to pull these guys out of stealth, and then I go into this pack like this. Because you don't want these guys, like, accidentally walking up on a ranged or a healer or even the tank mid-pack and stunning you. Uh, so if you do get stunned down there, that's better than getting stunned in the middle of this pack that has the honor guard in it, right? So uh, that's, that's why I do that. They're a little bit away from the totem there. Probably could have been on top of it just to maximize cleave and get damage on that honor guard earlier in the pack. But, you know... Not the end of the world here. And then just finishing off this pack again. Keeping as many kicks uh, in general on the Witch Doctor's Venom Blast. Because if two of those go out on the same player, it can be pretty, pretty dangerous. Especially on Fortified Weeks. Uh, moving on to the boss here. So, again, splitting up the DPS for this boss. So, you're going to see it's me, the healer, and the Ogvoker on this totem. And then a DPS on the other two totems. We're still going to be behind because of the Ogvoker totem. Uh, you know, we just don't have the same damage as the DPSers. So, you are going to notice that uh, eventually these DPSers come back and help us out over on our totem. As you just see, totems start to get low. See, they're at like 20-ish percent getting to below that. We're still like 60, so they're going to come over. Uh, they're going to, you know, help us out with this one. And then we're going to split and just make sure that these totems die at around the same time. So, you know, we get off that one, finish this one. And I actually believe that one just doesn't end up dying. Yeah, it's very slowly, but there we go. Then you just see us group up here. Ranger grouped up in the middle. They can do their own thing in the middle. And then me and the other melee are grouped up on the side with the boss. And basically, you know, we have two two sets going just down across the room uh, and rotating around as these uh, little puddles start spawning on top of us. But pretty straightforward here. And frankly, you have so much room on this boss. Uh, these, these start to disappear pretty quickly. So it's not really uh, a massive deal if you aren't perfect with your space. From there, we are going to actually come to another one of those uh, spots that I was talking about. Let's move forward past Volkal because not too much to talk about with this boss. Uh, we're going to kill this pack. Again, shield bearers, uh, witch doctors, you know, you stop the bulwarks. Again, if you can, that, that's a perfect lineup with the hexes. And kick these venom blasts. And this is where the spot is for the start of this area to help you avoid the leaps from the little dinosaurs. So it lets you pull a ton of them at one time. So basically, you can just walk up the side of this and jump up here. So you're just walking, 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 and you can jump like that. Obviously, again, rescue can work. Uh, any kind of double jump, whatever. And you can notice the melee is going up here as well. So boom, melee is up there. Just need to watch this kick, and what's going to happen here is I'm going to go get a bunch of these Sarids, and again, as long as people are in combat with these Sarids, they're going to never jump now, and I can take it right here. Uh, I could even be a little bit closer, uh, just so to guarantee that the, the, the rogue could hit it, but I believe he has long arms, so it's not a big deal, so just to guarantee any other melee could, could hit it from here, and you could do this even a bigger pull than this. Like You're going to probably see again, high keys, you're going to pull a ton of these mobs here and use these spots it works on the other side as well in the exact same spot i'll show you that as well uh, because you know it's just free it's a free pull now there's like only tank damage now there's another spot as well right here basically any of these areas uh, you can move over and jump to you see i think i'm gonna not quite do it but you know i'm gonna show basically you can jump right here and you can do the same thing there and the tank would just bring it to like right beside that pillar uh, and it's the same thing. It works exactly the same. So there's a lot of spots in this whole area. They can do that. And if you remember back in BFA, that spot I just showed, like these spots, that's where you used to tank the mobs. And they would all snap there. Don't do that anymore. Now you do the reverse. You do everyone else goes there and you tank the mobs like right here. As uh, This is a good actually angle. Yeah, so that, that's, that's how you would do it. Uh, and again, melee included. Melee go there and they can still hit the mobs from there assuming you tank close enough. Uh, we're going to do a similar thing with this, but because, you know, our spot's on the other side, we're just going to shroud through and do it after boss. Um, so that, that's why we do that. Um, this area, again, we've talked about some of this trash mob. Uh, you know, augers are important to keep the kicks on. Um, notably, the fiery enchant. So you'll notice sometimes when they cast fiery enchant that it doesn't actually do anything right away. Um, because we kick it, you know, within a, a, a tick or two. Basically, it's completely actually related to those juggernaut mobs that we talked uh, about earlier. And we're going to talk about again. And the swirlies only spawn on the auto attacks of the juggernaut mobs while fiery and chain is channeling so there's sometimes a bit of a grace period but you do want to kick that asap because there's a bunch of damage and it radiates around melee as well so can be a bit dangerous for them but let's move up a little bit here because we've got yet another cheese spot to talk about so you're gonna oh here it is let's be on so basically you can run along this little not railing i guess but this little little thing right here and you'll you'll see the range you're gonna try and jump it there's an invisible wall here basically but you can go beside it. Just watch. Eventually he'll get it. He gets it. I promise. There it is. Running along the edge there. Boom. This is another safe spot. So basically, again, as long as one player is here and they're in combat with the Juggernauts and everyone else is in melee, nothing nothing matters. 
the juggernauts will not charge uh, well they'll cast the charge but they'll do nothing with it so there's another cheese spot also on top of this brazier over here uh, if you can get on top of any of these braziers those are all also spots that work so keep that in mind depending on the direction you're coming from but again this is likely going to enable you to pull literally this entire room of trash you see we don't we only pull this and then we pull the other we probably could have actually pulled this entire room of trash as well uh with this spot um just because again with those uh charges not happening there's not a ton of danger it's just the fiery enchants you want to make sure and i think we do actually have a death to the fiery enchant uh maybe on the next pull i believe let me double check uh, yeah here it is so Again, we could have done this in one pull, I think, for sure, because, you know, we separated one Juggernaut, one Juggernaut. Um, but, yeah, with the Juggernaut's not doing anything, it's really not a big deal. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. Which, oh, there it is. So, yeah, if the Fiery Enchant, boom, it was off a little longer. That's what happens, of course. So, you just need to be ready to move if you don't insta-kick the Fiery Enchant. So, be aware of that. Otherwise, we go into the boss here after this trash mob. Uh, and, and very, very straightforward boss here, basically, right? Leave the Spirit of Gold whenever it's down. Oh, I think we we're going to try and like blind it or something, but then blind was non CD. Uh, so we just moved back. And so now we're going to big stun it, just cleave it down. Uh, and, you know, just make sure you step in the transfusion puddles when this cast is going off here. And honestly, like cooldown wise, you're going to see here, right? When this transfusion goes off, like this boss deals so much damage to herself. Like, look how much. And so, like, if you have like long CDs coming up, like at this point, for example, it's almost better to just hold them. Uh, and just kind of, you know, use them on the next boss on pull with like a blood blood or something like that. You know what I mean? Because if like, it's just, it's so little value on this boss because of how much friendly fire damage happens. But that's really only for longer cooldown. So something to keep in mind, because there is going to be a bit of a run uh, after this. We have to run down the stairs, get in the, the snap position or, you know, the anti-snap position, I guess. I don't know what to call it. But you can see again how much damage is going on. Uh, I guess the other thing to note, the Gilded Claws, this is the buff she gets that's for, you know, tank stuff. You can, it's a magic buff, so, you know, you can purge it off uh, or spell steal it. It's really not too dangerous in my experience, though, but, uh, you know, it's, you can get rid of it to have even less tank damage. And again, you can see here, boss is close to dead, so we just hard CC this spirit uh, and ignore it entirely. And then make our way down the stairs again. And same deal, exactly the same on this side, running up, jumping up. And I'm going to go, uh, you know, get these mobs, bring them over right beside here and everybody just murders them and they don't jump anywhere and it's really really nice and easy uh we have a couple sky screamers left but we're just making our way now back to the boss final boss yasma and this this boss uh, uh spider kind of uh keeping on top of the number of spiders out there to make this fight uh the, that's the real challenge on this fight so you're gonna see we have a pretty decent comp for it so we're gonna use uh immunities basically to soak these spiders we've got cloak we have my bubble and we have spell warding but of course any other major dr or immunity like netherwalk like even ice cold from a mage if they were running ice cold i don't i don't know if they do that in keys but that, that's an option as well things like that and you can use that to kind of clear up space uh and i actually will say i think we did this fight a little bit wrong here so, well so basically i think basically after you go out here bait i think everyone should come back in uh, on top of the tank area and be kiting solely around together as a group because you can see now these spiders are getting so spread out because when they're big they're fixating a player right when they're small they're just kind of in in a little circle patrolling so if everyone was together these spiders would be crazy grouped very very tightly grouped and that would mean that on the second spawn of spiders for example which again is player baited you see these spiders come out if we were all together here we could then probably use one immunity to just easily soak all these spiders but now it's a bit of a you know it's a bit it's a bit you know spread out i think here is also probably when we should have used our first immunity i think we wait for the next spider spawn in 10 seconds but this would have been a pretty good one i think and because our comp in particular has so many immune options with uh, you know two for me is the paladin uh and and the rogue with cloak we probably should have just ripped it every like two waves of spiders kind of deal just to clear space you see the spell warding kind of going out there they're in a bunch of them um but yeah it is a little rough as the tank here because of course the boss is running around following me so it's hard to get these if they aren't super grouped and again if the entire raid was kind of moving around the room together here uh you know everyone just here 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 and then moving out to drop these ads and then coming back in etc i think the grouping of the spiders would have been a lot easier and this fight would have been a lot less chaotic so little tip there uh, for you guys that maybe a mistake uh, we made and you guys can learn from 
But there we have it, guys. This is my plus 20 Atal Dazar walkthrough. Hopefully, this helps you out. If it does, subscribe to the channel for more content like it, including guides just like this one for every single dungeon. I've got 0.1% title kind of walkthrough routes planned for later in the season once we start pushing higher and higher keys, and even mythic raid boss guides as well. If you have any questions at all, please do leave them down in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer. Or you can always come over my Twitch channel at Tactics and ask me there, and I stream all of my raid progression. I stream all of my push keys over there as well, so come hang out uh, and see what it's like from a tank's perspective of course i wouldn't be able to do this without all of my amazing supporters over on patreon so thank you guys so much otherwise thanks everyone for watching and i'll see you all in the next video